Hello out there. Today I'm going to be explaining all the different math references I stuck into my song, The Limit as X Approaches Girlfriend. If you've still yet to see the video, then I would suggest you watch that first by clicking here. It would probably be a better idea to watch the video before you watch the video of me explaining it. Goes without saying. So anyway, first line of my song was, if your love's x and f of x is a function, then you can't love more than one in conjunction, because that would mean your original love wasn't true. Basically, a function cannot be a true function if it fails a vertical line test, which essentially means that it can't have more than one f of x for each x. In relation to a relationship, you, you can't love more than one person at the same time, because that invalidates your previous loves if they were loved simultaneously. So I put it in function form. Keeping the notion that x represents your love, I use the popular discrete math expression x belongs to a certain set to say that I wish that x belonged to me, but sadly i is not a subset of we because we returns the null set when it relates to you. i is not a subset of we anymore because when she says we, she's not referring to me and her, she's referring to her and someone else. So therefore, we returns the null set when it relates to her because I'm no longer involved. I loved this girl and she loved me too, but she was always tangent to some dude who'd rotate her head about the z-axis when he walked by. Basically an easy to understand expression. I liked a girl, she kinda liked me too, but she was always next to some other guy who happened to always turn her head whenever he walked by, or rotated her head around the z-axis. So while he's over there tangent to her curves, I'll be moping around here cause I ain't got the nerve to tell her how I feel and I don't wanna be that guy. Mathematical sexual innuendo. That's calculus one, so if you haven't had that class, you're like, this isn't funny. One of the wittiest lines of my song, in my opinion, was probably the bridge, which took me the longest to think of, and it was, I wish I could invert that graph on your face, that downward-facing parabola, and if you watched the video, you would understand the downward-facing parabola is obviously a frown, and by inverting it, I would make it smile, therefore, that, I just wish I could make you smile, yet again in math terms. On to the chorus! The whole song itself revolves around this concept of a limit, the limit as x approaches girlfriend. Now I'm not here to teach you guys calculus 1, but that's one of the first things you'll learn in calculus, is that as a function approaches a, an asymptote or you know a certain value, it, it'll never quite get there, but it's getting closer and closer and closer until infinity. So when I say the limit as x approaches girlfriend, no matter how close she approaches that line of girlfriend, she never ever will get there. And that's the slight bittersweetness of the song. So if you knew the definition of a limit, you were probably thinking, oh, this isn't actually a happy song after all. But anyway, on to the second verse. If you plotted my love for her in a graph, it'd be a rational, discontinuous and a half of the love I could give her if only we went out. This is pretty easy to understand. Basically, my love is irrational, it's not continuous, and it'd probably be double if we actually went out. Pretty simple. I think only about two or three people actually got the next line, which was, but no matter how hard I try, I'll never be the cardioid of your eye. This love of ours just seems so asymptotic. A cardioid is a function that kind of resembles an apple or a heart, so therefore if you watch the video, I drew little cardioids in her eye, and the line, this love of ours just seems so asymptotic, can actually represent a lot of different things. For instance, our relationship can go through different points, but it may approach but never actually get to a certain point. Therefore, it's asymptotic following along asymptotes people. In the class Deterministic Models of Operations Research, yes, it's a real class, I learned how to optimize functions by solving systems of equations simultaneously. To solve a function, you may have all these different equations that you have to solve at the same time, and therefore what I was saying in this line, if you count up all the nights I've cried over her because I couldn't optimize, her function had way too many constraints. Her equation had so many constraints, it was impossible to solve. Her solution is so unbounded that I'm pretty sure that it can't be found, and if it could, well, I just can't do it by hand. This line was actually a compliment that I put into the song, saying that she's so amazing that her equation cannot be solved by hand, and it's unbounded, it's never ending, it just keeps going and gets more and more incredible. With the final verse, it becomes obvious the song is not actually a happy song. When the time finally came, she sat me down and said, Listen, Ev, I'll explain it in terms you can understand. The terms, of course, were referring to mathematical terms. At this point, she's letting me down kind of slowly, saying, Hey, Ev, you're really a great guy, another variable, or girl, can't be hard to find. And then my favorite line in the entire song, We may be like terms, but I don't like you like that. Using a basic algebraic concept that like terms go together, I compared us to like terms, but yet she still told me, even though we're like terms, she doesn't like me like that. And at this point, she kind of contradicts herself, saying, Ev, know that I love you, but the love you thought we had was imaginary. And that's where I put the square root of negative one on a heart. If you've had anything past algebra one, you would know that the square root of negative one 
is an imaginary number. So therefore, by putting an imaginary number in a heart, the love was imaginary, metaphorically. The final lines of the song, she was my limit as X approaches girlfriend, if only I checked the domain. The domain, of course, being how much of the graph I actually looked at. And if you look at my album art, you'll see where I'm standing is right between 17 or 18, so you can't actually tell what the graph is doing between that period because in the song, I never checked that part of the domain. And that's what I was trying to do with my album art. As T approached 18, she diverged completely. Basically, as she got closer to being 18 years old, instead of being the limit as X approaches girlfriend, she just dropped off and became completely different, and ever since, she hasn't been the same. So that's my song. I hope you understand it now, because it had a lot of math references in it that I'm guessing not everybody would be able to get. But that's why you should stay in school. Make sure to take your upper-level maths. They're fun. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, and before I go, thanks to Dan Doby and District Lions for hooking me up with my own online t-shirt store within the next month. I should be selling a shirt that has the square to negative one and a heart on it and some witty math lines. If you'd like to know what is on the shirt, uh, just click on this video from my daily blog and I talk about it eventually. So yeah, have a nice day. Nave Regnide. Oh, I ripped my pants. Oh. <laughs>